Welcome to the Archetypal Mosaic. This ultra special episode is about magic. Today we have an exclusive interview with Mark Wilson, who is the famed and respected magician of the Magic Castle and is credited as becoming the very first television magician. Um, welcome to the show, Mr. Wilson. Well, thank you. Nice to be here. Um, I had the privilege of taking a class with you with one of my friends of the Magic Castle. And um, can you please describe what the Magic Castle is for the world that may not know, and what part you played in creating the beauty of it? Well, thank you very much, yes. Uh, the Magic Castle is a private club uh, for magicians. It is also called the Academy of Magical Arts, which was a name that was uh, attributed to it by the father of uh, the Larson family, uh, uh, and uh, this was, he passed away, I never met him, but he passed away in the late, uh, what, the late 40s, 50s, yes, the late 50s, um, yeah, about 1953. So, anyway, it is a private club for magicians in order to join the club. It's uh, uh, like middle expensive for private clubs uh, around, I don't know what the cost is now, five or $600, I think, for a year. But uh, you also should be a magic performer. Now, in order to join the castle, you have to do a magic performance and audition, if you will, for a group of uh, other Magic Castle members showing that you do know and can do some magic. It's a bit more complicated than that, but basically that's what it is, a private club for magicians. It's a very beautiful place, great dinners, several theaters of shows. You were also the president there for several years. Can you describe your presidency there and um, what you gained from that? Well, yes, I was president. I have been a member, of course, as a founding member back in the first days, which was uh, 19, when was it, 63? Yeah, 63, we opened. And uh, there were about 25 of us founding members, uh, all of whom were, or most of whom were professional magicians. Um, and uh, we had to put the opening off for a day in order to get the license for the bar for uh, hard drinks. So uh, <laughs> that was not that that's very important to magicians, but uh, that's what happened. Now, the library there in the basement is very sacred and is for members only. Can you describe some of the rare texts in the library and perhaps your favorite text about magic? Well, there are, uh, at, at the moment, and I don't know how many it really is, uh, except I know that it's well over 25,000 items, different items, different books, and other items that are in our library. So it is a great reference, perhaps the largest library available uh, in the world now, I think. And um, the, uh, uh, it's, it's very important to the castle, but in order to go into the library and to use the contents of the library, you have to be a member uh, and prove that you are a member uh, in order to go to, into and look through those mainly uh, magic books in the library. There are other, a few other books in there, sort of a general uh, feel of magic, if you will, but the most important ones are the ones that you have to be a magician in order to look at. And we also have a number of antique books uh, from the 17, 18th uh, century 
15, 16, 17, because magic has always been an important part of uh, our culture and the culture of uh, most countries in, in the world. That's a great point. Tell me, what does magic do? Does it uh, give us a sense of a suspension of disbelief? Does it all bring us back to our child self? What does magic do for you and the people who come to you and share their experiences from your work? Well, uh, of course, we started our television show back in 1954 in Dallas, Texas. I graduated from a Southern Methodist University. I married the lovely Nani Darnell, who was uh, probably the best decision that I made in my entire career, was yeah. marrying the lovely Nani Darnell. And um, so I, and I had always wanted to have a television show on the air because there were no television shows that had magic in them, except, of course, for the wonderful Ed Sullivan show, which had the best acts, magic acts, in the world, and the best variety acts as well. But there was no magic series on the air that amounted to anything. So when uh, I graduated and I figured, well, now it's time for me to try and get on the air with a television show. There were four television stations in Dallas. The three network stations, CBS, uh, NBC, and ABC, and one independent station. I called on all of those four stations, and they knew me pretty well because I had been head cheerleader for SMU back in the day. 1951, 52, etc. And they all, the program directors at all of the stations said to me, Mark, you're a nice guy, we like you, we know you do magic, but magic won't work on television. You see, everybody will think it's done with trick photography. Now, there's never been television before, they're saying to me because uh, everything, it's a new kind of entertainment medium. And uh, as you know, there are many trick photography things that can be done with television. Well, I didn't actually know that, except I, what I had seen that was on the air. And there wasn't that much on the air at that time. And I said, no, I don't think the audience watching our show our magic show will think it's trick photography because we're going to tell them it is not trick photography and uh, Michael, uh through my entire career I have never used trick photography except when it was for a, some kind of a special effect that a sponsor or somebody wanted on That's the wonderful. air yeah I have never never use trick photography. And I think that's true of, should be true of every magician. Almost all of them will follow the three rules that we set up for performing magic on television. Right. One, uh, never tell how a trick is done. Uh, two, um, Never use a trick photography. And then three, tell the audience that that's what you're doing, that you're not using trick photography of any kind. And it works. We found in various surveys that have been made for our shows over the last 50 years or so that most people who watch the show will not think that it was done by trick photography, but, but will realize when they watch that what they're seeing is the, you pardon the phrase, real magic of magic, as they would see if it was live. Beautiful. Uh, tell me, 
Did he influence you? Did you have any connection to him or his family or his work? No, I had none. Yeah. He, uh, he had passed away before I became... I think he passed away in 26 or 27 or 20, whatever. Mm -hmm. I was born in, in 1929. See, I'm 88 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. But with 88 years old, I'm happy to be anywhere. <laughs> We're very, I think everybody's very happy that you're here because you've brought so much happiness to people. Um, about your incredible TV, television show, um, if you can describe, I know that Nani was your assistant and you had a, another gentleman who was part of the show. Can you describe uh, how many seasons that was? What were some of your favorite episodes and where can people find that? Sure. Well, we started off in Dallas, Texas with a show that was on for 15 minutes twice a week, 6.45, six, yeah, 6.45 to 7. 5.45, Nani is correcting me, 5.45 to 6 in Dallas. Now those shows are, are really all gone uh, because there was no videotape at that time. There was no way really to record a television show except with a movie camera. So... And that was just Mark and I, and we had a not, an announcer on the show, the regular TV studio announcer. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Nani, Nani Darnell is joining the conversation. Welcome, Nani. Oh, hello there. She is indeed, and I'm so glad she's here, because she's helping me a lot. <laughs> That's wonderful. It's wonderful to have both of you on the show. Well, and, 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 and in regard to television shows, we were on first in Dallas. That show was a success. And uh, then I sold the show to a sponsor in San Antonio, Waco, and Houston each week. That is, we would have to drive to the city where we were presenting the show. We would drive to, let's say, the main three at the end were uh, Houston, San Antonio, and Dallas. But they were all live because there was no videotaping or anything like that at that time. So you had to go, you had to go there to do the show with a new director, new uh, guy playing the organ, which was part of our shows, and, uh, and, and it was working well. So we had not made uh, any money to speak of from the shows, but when we were on in three markets, we were making a little, and we are thinking, ah, now it's time to go to a bigger market, which is where there was additional money. So that would mean New York, uh, Los Angeles, or Chicago. We finally decided that the best place of all, after making several calls, was in Los Angeles. And um, that's when I sold the show to Kellogg's. This is a long. All of this took a lot of years. We were on in the in the different cities in Texas for several years uh, before we even started trying to sell the show, and then it, and then sold it. Since we yeah. started in in uh, '54, and then we went on the air with our network show in 1960. Wow. Well. So. Let me ask you one question. What what made you come up with the name Alakazam, and what does Alakazam mean? Okay. Uh, when we sold the show the first time, the network show, there's a lot of more story that goes in between here, but we sold the network show to Kellogg's through the new Leo Burnett Advertising Agency out of Chicago. And after I sold the show to the agency, before we went on the air, uh, I was asked by the agency, by one of the executives in the agency, if we could change the name of the show to Alakazam because they had a new serial coming out in the next year, which was called uh, All Stars, no? Yeah, Kellogg's All Stars, Alakazam 
What a wonderful wizard I am, Kellogg's All Stars. That was the theme the song. You see. buy the stars, the holes are free. So that's where Alakazam came from in our show. And a capital K. Mm-hmm. With a capital K in the middle, yeah. And and what is where does the term come from? Aside from the advertising agency, do you know the root of the of the term? What does it mean? No, it, it's it's kind of a magical word. Uh, there's a, there's abracadabra, etc. And uh, Alakazam was primarily used for the Kellogg's All Stores, and that's where it really came from. Was there. there there was a song. That had Alex examine it, that song about magic yeah. years ago. <laughs> That's cool. Now, tell me about your book. Your book called Mark Wilson's Complete Course in Magic, which is yep. also available autographed at this point on markwilsonmagic.com, has sold over 800,000 copies worldwide. This is one of the very top, or the top, book in magic instruction of all time. Uh, tell us about the success of the book and the classes that you that you do with the book. Okay, the, I wrote the book back in the early 1970s and it was first published in uh, 1975. And uh, we put it uh, on the market. We printed 5,000 books. They were moderately successful. And then I was... Uh, you see, we, uh, as you as you know, um, we have performed all over the world, Ani and I, in many, many countries. And so I was flying back from Hong Kong, waiting in line at the airport, and a fellow from another line came over and said, are you Mark Wilson? And I said, yes. He said, well, well, I'd like to publish your book. Now, that was after the book had been published for about a year, year and a half. And uh, I said, well, I don't know whether I want to do that or not. So I came back, I flew back to Los Angeles, met with uh, some people here, decided maybe these people could do it because they seemed to be uh, well into the publishing business. And uh, I, I turned the book over to them, and they published it. And it's now, it's, it's probably not just 800,000. I think that's older footage that you're... That's old copy that you're reading. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, I think, more like a million now. And it is, it's been published in six languages. Um, Italian, Spanish, English, French, Russian, uh, Chinese. Chinese, yeah. So I don't know how many that is. Yeah, I can anyway, read two of those languages. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Yeah, good for you. Tell me, wow. Nani, if you can share with us your incredible adventures around the world, what were some of the highlights performing in different countries, and what kind of responses did you get from the audiences? Magic is enjoyed all over the world. Everywhere yep. you go, they enjoy magic. It really is interesting. And uh, the uh, Asian countries seem to have a higher, uh, and I'm not, I wouldn't say higher enjoyment, but they have more people who are anxious to get into magic than some of the other countries. Um, China, China was, we went there first uh, because Mark introduced magic to the to the Chinese people in, in, in Washington, D.C. I called on the embassy, which was not the embassy when I started calling. That was before they were recognized by America, hmm. by the United States. Mm-hmm. But then the mission, which was actually an old hotel in Washington, D.C., was turned into the embassy. And uh, then they invited us to bring a show to China, so. After Mark had been going to the embassy and visiting with them for about three years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. And they were, it was an amazing experience. It was most one of the most unusual experiences we ever had at performing because we were the first 
non uh, Chinese people yeah. were the first foreign, the first Western, first Western people to perform for the Chinese people uh, in the uh, how many years? Thirty-two years. Of right. Since Mao had taken over and thrown Chiang Kai-shek out. So none of the Chinese people had seen anyone. They would not seen anyone from from J Japan, uh, Germany, England, uh, Russia, you name it, any other country. We were the first Amer first other people they had seen, uh, these people. And they were just wonderful to us and wonderful to perform for. And so after getting the invitation from the Chinese, that's when I put the show together. And I, we made it a big illusion show. We took 20 people on our staff and 5,000 pounds of props to China. And many things happened in China. We were there for three weeks on that first trip. We've been back a number of times. We made many friends in China because they were very nice people. And when we were there, we performed in theaters, in, in communes, on trains, in factories, uh, you name it. We performed any, anywhere they went, asked us to go perform for them. We did it. Yeah. Amazing. It was wonderful. Tell me, you know, magic is kind of like music. People don't need to understand the words. They can feel it. They can enjoy the laughter. It's universal. Yes, um, that's true. What kind of reactions, responses, specifically, like when you receive fan mail or people go backstage after a show, what do they say? Like, you brighten up my, my day, you made me feel like a child again. What, what kind of things do they yeah. say to you? Yeah, they say all those things. Uh, and uh, we're happy to hear that. Uh, and interestingly, people in foreign countries say wonderful things as well when they can talk to, to us, when they have the ability <laughs> to talk to us. When they speak English. Yeah. Because we don't speak most of the other languages. <laughs> your incredible television series, The Magic Land of Alakazam, is actually available on your website, markwilsonmagic.com, in several volumes. Can you describe uh, these incredible volumes that you've created on DVD? Yeah, we did the uh, Magic Land of Alakazam uh, starting in uh, what, 1960. October 1960. Uh, and we did... Uh, over a five-year period, uh, three years on two three, years on two years on CBS, three on ABC, and we went off of CBS one Saturday, and went on ABC the next Saturday. Not too many shows do that, uh, and we produced uh, about uh, I think a total of ninety-nine different half-hour. Magic Land of Alakazam shows. And those are the ones that we are selling on our website. Well, there are 50 of the shows that are actually being sold on the website yeah. that we have, uh, that we have uh, transferred to DVD. Now, um, as we are coming to a conclusion of this exclusive interview, so okay. please tell us about the Magic Castle classes that you do. I remember being in one of them, and I really enjoyed it. Well, we started uh, teaching magic at the Magic Castle about 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, the classes are held uh, two or three a week, a couple of hours in each class. We teach all kinds of magic, but primarily we teach close-up magic rather than the illusions. Now, we have performed, <laughs> I think Nani Darnell has floated in the air and been in more illusions than in any other beautiful bond assistant mm -hmm. in the history of the world. Because when you go on television, it's different than when you do anything else. Uh, I mean, when you're a, uh, an illusionist like Blackstone, uh, uh, Houdini, uh, uh, Thurston, any of those magicians trooped an illusion show and they could do the same show over and over again because if they went into one city they would work for a, a few days a week a month a year in that city depending on the size of the city and the response that they got but 
they would do the same show over and over again. But we found out, and it was certainly true, that in a television show, you can't do the same thing over and over. You've got to have a new show next week. Mm -hmm. And none of these men, who, who are the people that we really appreciate, uh, and, and, and who advanced magic did not do the same show over and over again. Wonderful. And so, tell me, what is in the future for you, Mark? You're still teaching. Are you writing anything new? Uh, not at the moment, no. I'm not writing anything but, new, but I eventually will. And uh, a lot of this will be in there. <laughs> Wonderful. There's got to be a biography or an autobiography about you someday. Well, I hope so. <laughs> and I hope I'm the one that writes it. <laughs> exactly. If it's not biography. Now, uh, I really appreciate you being on the show, both you and Nani. It was a pleasure to take classes with you at the Magic Castle. It's a pleasure to speak to you now. For those interested in the DVDs, wow. the signed books, uh, which are available at the time of this recording, um, go to markwilsonmagic.com. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience, Mark? No, they can go to the Magic Castle as well, that is, on their computer. Now, they can't get into the Magic Castle unless they have a special invitation or unless they are a magician. So that's a good thing to do to look at what they can find out about the Magic Castle on the computer and, of course, to visit our website. So thank you for a very nice interview. And as you have seen, our batteries... <laughs> And my battery is running out, so, so I'm going to have to say goodbye. Thank you so much, Mark. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, thank you. Okay, bye-bye.